Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today we got ourselves a little shop modification, and it's going to happen right over there. So let me take you over there and show you what we're going to be doing. All right, so what we have here is my metal cutoff saw, and it pretty much lives in this area right here. Uh, I do all my cutting here. This is the best spot in the shop for now for this thing. It's been here for a long time, and it's flexible. I move it around, and it's all depending on the size of the material. And if I'm cutting 45, I can move this thing on an angle to, to support all that, and that's all good. I made these little things right here. I had a video on this. And that's these things at the same elevation as the table. I've got a couple down there at that end to support the end of long uh, stock that I have in here. But the problem is, is anything that is like 10 feet, 11 feet, 12 feet is like sticking out too far and I don't have any support out here for that. I've got this thing right here. Let me bring this thing in here. I got this thing right here, all right? And this is what I usually set up and it, it sits out here and it, it's okay. But, uh, you know, it's just not ideal. Every time I got to bring this thing in for, to cut material and, and, you know, it's got a roller and sometimes it rolls off the end. And, yeah, it's just not ideal. So what I have here is I got a little bit of space right in this slot right here between the toolbox and the drill press. And I thought it would be a good idea if I make something that would sit in there and I can extend an arm out right here and that would support any long stock that I have right here and be able to work uh, efficiently here. And when I'm done, I can just slide this thing right back in, just flush to the end of the table, and maybe that would be, you know, I can eliminate this thing finally. So let's get started on making that. I got a little bit of room right here. I've gone through the material, um, trying to find the, uh, the right size to put in here that's going to be level with the table here and it looks like it's going to be some two inch square tube with some inch and three quarter square tube that's going to slide inside and it looks to me like i might have to have a little shim underneath the two inch right here to get it up to where it's perfectly level but that's not going to be a problem so let's get started and making this little project right here all right so here i am over at my scrap bin right here and this is a great reason why uh, to hang on to everything that you have from previous projects. I was able to find a piece of two inch square tube that was just about the right size and an old rusty piece of inch and three quarter square tube from the big rack. Between the two, I've got the stuff I need. Ah. All right, we got some two inch square tube here. There's some inch and three quarter. Alright, that slides in there pretty good. Alright, let's cut everything to dimension and get this thing going. Alright, so I'll grab a couple of uh, pencils from the pencil holder and my square from my layout drawer and a tape measure from the tape measure rack and just mark everything out that I need and get ready to cut things on the saw. All right, so it's a good, uh, good. Uh, you can see that that little riser block I have that I've made for my saw. I've got one on either end. You can see how that uh, that works out really good. It just acts as a really long table, and uh, for me and what I have right here, it, that was been that was a good addition. All right, with the pieces cut, back to the rack, and a couple pieces of angle iron, a couple pieces of flat plate, and a two-inch flat bar, a little bit longer piece. And this piece right here is going to be used for the shim on the bottom of the outer tube. And this is going to uh, get me raised up to the elevation I need. You know, I can't say enough about these Brute uh, Champion Twister drill bits. Uh, you know, 135 degree uh, point on these. And, uh, you know, you can see that I can just stick them right in there. I don't need a center punch or a pilot hole or anything you can basically just mark it and just set the drill right there and it just goes right through it pretty cool super sharp drill bits all right with everything all done it's just time for the assembly right here and i'm going to start with this piece of two inch by one eighth inch flat bar stock and like i said this is going on the bottom of the outer tube 
and I'm just going to go along here about every six inches and put about a half inch uh, little bead on there. That's all I really need. And then I'm going to go ahead and start putting the angle brackets on. But then before I do that, it looks like I've got to just grind that weld down on the outside. So I just thought I'd go ahead and just grind them all down nice and flat. Now this uh, piece of angle iron, like I said, I, I could have I could have cut this in half and probably used it for the other piece, but uh, these pieces were just there, they're scrap, and they're going to work out uh, just fine for what I'm using them for. With that one welded on the outside, I've got my measurement right here, and I'm just going to go ahead and stick the second one on. Doesn't require much again. And then a small piece of two inch flat bar stock for the outside. And this is what I'm gonna to use to attach it to the side of the workbench. And between uh, the angle iron and this outside, it's gonna be really secure. All right, and I'm just gonna take a flap disc and go along and just kind of lightly clean up uh, all the rough edges and outside edges. It's not real important, but I just don't wanna have anything that's gonna be a sharp edge or something that'll get snagged on so I just like to round everything off and deeper everything and clean things up a little bit. Alright so with that out of the way the old rusty piece of inch and three uh, inch and three quarter inch square tube and I'm just putting an end cap on this one end right here. Uh, I do that in pretty much everything that I do. I just don't like leaving open tubes. It just looks for like a uh, an unfinished product. Uh, I just like to, you know, put caps on the ends of everything. It sure doesn't take very long. Uh, just go around all the way around and weld it around and then just take a flap disc and go and clean that up and uh, just deburr everything and it uh, it just makes for a finished product. It's just the way I like to do things anyway. All right, so I want to do something about this rust. I've got a uh, surface preparation disc here from Mercer, and uh, this thing here is used. It works really good for stripping rust or paint or any other debris that may, you may have on some on some metal. In this case, uh, I want to take the rust off. I want to get it down to bare metal, and it's just really effortlessly here. Those wheels work pretty good. All right, with that done, there was just one more thing I wanted to do right here. Uh, you can see I've clamped it down, I've slid the tube in, everything seems to be working fine. But I wanted to mark the inner tube uh, with uh, a red sharpie all the way around. It's just like a safety mark, if you will. I just uh, This is going to let me know that uh, I don't want to really pull this out too much past that red mark. That's pretty much the limit. All right, with everything done there, uh, just put it in its place and it fits right in just the way I was hoping. Just a couple of lag screws in the very top of the workbench right here. And then a couple lags on the side of the workbench. And this job is complete. And this is going to be a great addition to the shop. All right. That's pretty good. Let's pull this thing out. I've got my level here. Level across the table. And that is pretty good. You know, this is a 10 foot length right here, and no matter what cut I can do, it's going to support this very good. And then from here, I'll be able to just shove it straight across the loading table and get it out of the way. For a 20 foot length, it's going to be no problem because I'll have the welding table to support the additional footage there. And when we're all done, it's out of the way, and it's flush to the end of the table right here. Ah, that's a good addition to the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.